So all these AI systems are starting to be integrated into our daily lives. But why is AI so hot today? It all starts in October 2015, when an AI algorithm trained by Google DeepMind beat the world number one player, Lee Sido, at the game of Go. The number of possible moves in the game of Go is much, much more than in chess. In fact, more than the number of atoms in the universe. So a program that was able to master this game was only expected to come onto the scene in 2025 or 2030. The fact that this technology arrived 10 years early was a huge surprise, and the race was on to apply it in industry. Of course, this achievement was not the only thing that contributed to the fast spread of AI since 2015. There have been many secular trends that have enabled this spread. First is the fact that data is now everywhere. 10 years ago, when we were still in the 3G age, it was difficult to collect data. However, now every device is internet enabled and we can collect, transmit and store data all the time. Second was the development of advanced algorithms like the deep neural network, which enabled the development of programs like AlphaGo, which as you saw, defeated the world number one player, Lee Si Do. However, having advanced algorithms would not have been very useful if they stayed locked up in the research institutions where they were made. Luckily, the likes of Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, and YouTube came into play, and some of the earliest courses on these online learning platforms were AI courses taught by the very inventors of the advanced AI algorithms as they sought to publicize their research. Many of the first wave of AI talent taught themselves AI in this manner without going through any formal courses. Fourth was the massive decrease of the cost of computing with the advent of cloud computing. Something which cost $10,000 just five to 10 years ago now costs only $10 because you only have to pay for the compute that you use and not the whole system itself. And lastly, all the logos that you see here, Python, R, Hadoop, Spark, SQL, these are all free and open source software that gives cutting edge abilities to the practitioners that need to collect their data, process it, and apply machine learning algorithms on it. All these factors came together to help AI spread far and wide in a fast, democratic way. So now that you know why AI has become so popular, let's demystify a bit of jargon behind AI. What is AI? What is machine learning? Is AI part of machine learning? Or is machine learning part of AI? Let's take a historical perspective to find out. Let's rewind time back to the 1950s when hard drives were the size of a cupboard but only had five megabytes of storage. AI had already come on the scene then, but they were more skewed towards expert systems. If A happens, then do B. Or if B happens, then do C. Computing power and storage was severely limited. But most importantly, people realized that the experts were actually not telling the programmers everything they needed to know to create the expert system, which is the Kung Fu master problem. This led to AI being unable to fulfill expectations. And the first AI winter happened. Then, in the 1980s and 1990s, the era just before and after Windows 95, computing power and storage had grown. People started to realize that they could use this extra storage and power to automate statistical models that they were doing by hand. And by doing this, machines could begin to provide dynamic output based on new data being fed into these models. This was the beginning of machine learning. However, just as in the previous era, these machine learning algorithms were generally not able to perform better than trained humans due to a lack of computing power, data, and storage. The second AI winter happened. 
By the 2010s, computing power and storage had grown so much that deep learning algorithms were able to come onto the scene. This is the same algorithm that Google DeepMind used to beat Lee Sido. If you compare this neural network diagram to the one in 1950, you can see that the concept is not new. The only difference is that with the extra data, computing power, and storage, deep learning algorithms have begun to be able to exceed not just regular humans, but the most highly trained humans in the world in a variety of industries. So that's AI and machine learning. How about data science and business analytics? There's a very famous chart showing the distinction between data analytics and machine learning. Basically, if you are looking at a data set and you're looking to describe what happened, say, last quarter's results, then we are conducting descriptive analytics, which is the realm of data analysis. If we are trying to predict what next quarter's results are going to be, this is where predictive analytics comes in. And this is where your machine learning techniques and tools reside. Beyond predictive analytics is prescriptive analytics, where we are trying to describe what to do with the results of the predictions. This is still a field where computers cannot outperform humans. So wait, what's the difference between traditional programming and machine learning again? In traditional programming, the programmer will have to consult with domain experts and manually experiment to determine the best equation to fit the curve. In this case, it is y equals to 5x1 plus 7x2 plus 0 0.1, which is manually determined by the programmer and put into the program. And it won't change with new data unless the programmer updates it. In machine learning, there is no more manual experimentation. The programmer just selects the algorithm and the machine learning program automatically computes the best equation. In this case, it is y equals to 4.8x1 plus 7.2x2 plus 0 0.25. Here, as we have new data coming in, we can always recompute the curve to update the best fit. 